On my screen I have a rope, a piece of turned wood, barley sugar or rope pattern, and another piece of turned wood, barley sugar or rope pattern. And they're all slightly different. The twist on this rope is quite a, I was going to say steep angle, it's not, it's a shallow angle. This one is a lot steeper. This one is wider in the body and quite a nice shape. So we're going to make all three. Unfortunately, I've got to blow my screen up, otherwise I can't see properly. And I'm a wee bit slow because I have problems with my hands. So you just have to bear with me. And I start off using my run line tool. It doesn't matter what length the stitch is or anything like that. And I blow up my shape. And I'm going to start on this one. Put my first node in here, which was left node. These are right nodes. Ignore the fact that this is an enormous great image. It won't be this size when we're finished. And tuck that one up there. That was a left node. These are right nodes. And finish that one off there. Okay, now I've done that. Now I'm going to hide my image. I don't need that anymore. I'm going to turn on objects, highlight that one, go up to edit, say duplicate. I'm going to change the color of the duplicate because it helps me. And I'm going to shift that shape over and I use my directional arrow keys to do that. Right. Now you can see there's a wild discrepancy between this side and this side. Well, the far side and this one. So now I'm going to duplicate this middle one. I'm going to change the color to green because I need to be able to see the differences. Hotch my screen over. And using my directional right arrow key, move that one over. OK. So the first thing we notice is they all overlap down here. And we don't want that. So I'm going to highlight the middle one. And I go into Object Reshape. And I'm just going to alter the nodes on this edge. OK, that's that edge altered. Doesn't mean it will work. Just means I've altered the nodes. So I tell that Stop. And I'm going to highlight that one again. I'm going to tell it duplicate. And we'll make the next one purple. And we'll budge him over. Come on, you can go faster than that, surely. Now this might all seem a bit of a faddle to you. And I suppose in a way it is. We've still got that overlap, which means this particular wall is now too high. So I'm going to move this one over in this direction. Put him onto there. Now he's right and he's right. So put him on here. OK. Tell that stop. So we've got, let's just check that we do have Our blue one seems to be giving us the best result. That's the middle one out of all of them. So I'm going to move this purple shape back over to the blue. Line them up on the top. Right. I'm going to get rid of the red. Delete. Highlight my blue one. Go into Edit. Tell it duplicate. Turn him red. Because it helps me. Drag him over in this direction. Oh, and I should have used my arrow keys. Is that in the right spot? Just about. A little bit low. Just budge him up a touch. Yeah, he is giving the best result, and this end is tucking in underneath. That's fine. 
So I click off. I want the blue one. So I get rid of the rest. One, two, hold down my control key for the last one. I use my shift key for these two top ones and I hit my delete key. Ah, okay. One, two, delete. Get rid of the red and I digitize the blue one. So I go and I pick up my turning angle tool and I lay my first two nodes. Following my outline, because I know this particular outline meets up perfectly. And then I want to start turning my angles at the bottom because this has got to be tucking in underneath. A straight node in there and just pop a node there. Right. Ah, and I took away this next one. So I need a guideline now. Where's my rulers? Oh, I forgot I was working on something else. Sugar lumps. This one will do. i just get rid of this one. Come on, I don't want you now. Get rid of that one. Because they're just confusing the issue. Get rid of that one. Get rid of that one. That one. That one. That one. And I'll get rid of all these. I love my guidelines. I use them for everything. Okay. So that's where I want to put my travel line because I don't want to jump in between each motif. So I go and I pick up my run line tool and I just run a line up here until I reach that guideline because that marks the spot where the next one joins in. And I enter that. I clear that. Get rid of it. I highlight the top one, hold down shift, highlight this, hold down shift Maggie, highlight the second one, tell it, group. Okay, now I go into object details. I need to lower my satin stitch. My machine doesn't like it up at 109%. I take mine down to around 90, 9900. Then I go into dimensions. And I tell this, 15. Do I need it that big? No, I think maybe 10% will be fine. It's just under 3. No, we'll make it 15. I'll make that one 15. Okay. Now I go to Embroidery, Make Motif, um, I want YouTube, there we go, Rope 1, OK. I put my first node in here on that middle handle, I put my second node in here on that outside handle. Rope 1 has been created, so I click off that and I go and I pick up my motif run line and I just create a line of nodes. There we go. That's the first rope. Okay. The one with the <laughs> Uh, falling backwards diagonal. I can't think of the word. You have to forgive me. I'm getting old. 
Okay, now we're going to do the second one. I want to hide the rest of these. One, two, three. 